let's look first at the environment in which we fly. All flight depends upon the properties that exist within the atmosphere. But what is the atmosphere? It is that small part of our universe that surrounds the surface of the Earth with a layer of air. Flight, as we know it, is only possible within that small portion of the universe. The lift of the aeroplane, its controls and stability. How much does air weigh? Well, at 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, most people would find it hard to lift the weight of air in the average sized room. But to complicate matters, the weight of the air changes with altitude. At sea level, three cubic meters of air will weigh 3.85 kilograms, but weigh only 1.8 kilograms at 20,000 feet and less than 0.45 kilograms at 60,000 feet. For an aeroplane to fly, we have to provide it with a lifting force, and one that is at least equal to its weight. The force that lifts an aeroplane into the air and keeps it airborne comes through its wings, which are curved shape, particularly over the top. Lift will be vertically upwards, weight vertically downwards, thrust horizontally forwards, and drag horizontally backwards. If lift and weight are equal, a constant height can be maintained. If thrust and drag are also equal, a constant speed can be maintained. If, however, the lift is far back and the weight forward, the aeroplane will tend to turn on its nose and is said to be nose heavy. An aircraft may be loaded so as to be nose or tail heavy due to the positioning within the aeroplane of freight, passengers, fuel, etc., yet still be within operating limits. Also, as the aeroplane burns off fuel in flight, there could be a change in the balance, although this can be partly corrected by moving fuel from one tank to another. Aeroplanes are unlike any other form of transport in that the slower they move, the more dangerous they become. Fly too slowly and the aeroplane will stall, having lost flying control and will simply fall out of the sky. The stall speed of an aeroplane varies depending on a number of factors, such as type of aeroplane and weight. Regardless of type, Increase the weight and you also increase the speed at which the aeroplane will stall. Like the takeoff, an aeroplane generally lands into wind. This is done so as to reduce the forward velocity of the aeroplane relative to the ground. As with the takeoff, there may also be a crosswind component. The length of time and runway it takes to bring the aeroplane to rest after landing depends on its touchdown speed, which will depend on a number of factors such as weight, how the aeroplane is configured and wind strength. Obviously a strong headwind component will also have a greater effect on the aeroplane's speed along the runway. Theoretically we want to land at the slowest speed possible yet still have total control of the aeroplane. What is turbulence? The formal explanation is that turbulence is an irregular motion of the air resulting from the formation of eddies or vertical currents in the air. Well, what are the causes of turbulence? There are several. Friction between the air and the ground can be experienced in the lower portion of the airstream characterized by a marked choppiness. Turbulence may result from heating of the Earth's surface by the sun. In the summer, bubbles of heated air, sometimes hundreds of meters in diameter, form next to the ground and ascend through the surrounding air one after the other. Each current ascends with increasing speed until it reaches a level where the temperature of the ascending air is the same as that around it. Again, this is more often to be found at lower level. 
Frontal systems also bring turbulence and is due to the uplift imparted to the warmer air by the sloping frontal surface.